Alright? Uh, good afternoon, everyone, especially to the teachers out there who are watching us right now. So before anything else, I'd like to remind everyone, alam ko po, maraming po nag-aantay ng certificates for attending the different webinars, uh, speaking engagement that Vival has been offering to you. However, uh, please, uh, bigyan nyo lang po kami ng onting oras na po because uh, right now po, uh, definitely pinaprocess na po lahat ng certificates. Uh, we will send... Ayan. So, sorry, nagkaroon po na unting technical difficulties. All right. So, we will send them to you as soon as possible. In the meantime, kindly check if you have followed all the, all of their instructions po. You can message through customer care at vivalgroup.com or through their Facebook uh, page. Yung Vival Group po. Hanapin lang po natin. I-message po natin sila so that we can follow up other certificates. Rest assured po that the Vival personnel po are already doing their best effort para may release po sa inyo ang inyong mga certificates as soon as possible. Again po, uh, good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon po. To those who are watching right now, I hope you'll be able to gain a lot of new insights today as we try to explore the different roles of technology in 21st century education. And of course, as we try to get to know more the different technology-based teaching methods and strategy, specifically po, of course, about hybrid education. Looking at the number po, kanina po, umabot na tayo ng almost 12K, 13K po ata. And then while checking po, uh, yung ating number of viewers po kanina, almost 20,000 na po. Uh, halos wala pa po isang oras na nakakalipas. Ngayon na po, we already have 2,000 viewers and this is really overwhelming. So thank you po sa panonood, sa pakikinig. I hope uh, I would be able to do what I have to do, of course, to deliver the content of our webinar today. Again, welcome to our webinar entitled The Potential of Teaching and Learning Through Hybrid Education. I am Mr. Jordan Kim Perquera, a graduate of the Philippine Normal University and of the Ateneo de Manila University. At present, I am currently teaching uh, English and journalism courses at the University of Santa Tomas Junior High School. Uh, before I start my presentation, again, disclaimer lang po, sources of all the information that I use for the webinar today are cited towards the end of the presentation. If you will be asking a copy of the presentation po from Bival, uh, you would be seeing there all the sources that I actually uh, use po. So videos, if we, if we would be having, uh, are not mine and credits, of course, are given to the owners, all right? So my dear teachers, when it comes to education, of course, we have to remember that change is inevitable. Even uh, in the field of education, even here in our country, actually, this famous saying is indeed being immortalized. This changes, or should I say developments, in the field of education have truly brought a challenge to us educators, especially uh, on how we would be able to deal with our learners today, considering that they're far different from how we used to be nung tayo yung nasa uh, mga classrooms, right? So, and those things po, we would be discussing today as we try to, of course, discuss uh, three of the famous 21st century teaching strategies, which are hybrid learning, uh, blended learning, and of course, flipped classroom. But before we talk about those things, uh, tandaan lang po muna natin, my dear teachers, na uh, ang mga certificates po ulit, ulitin ko lang po ah, certificates po uh, would be given po, uh, magbigay lang po tayo ng onting pasensya po because sobrang dami po talaga ng uh, mga attendees po natin. All right? So, my dear teachers, I'll show you po uh, the PowerPoint presentation that I actually uh, prepared. Wait lang po ah. All right, so here it goes, Paul. Sure. Okay, so there you go. All right, so I think you're seeing now the PowerPoint presentation. Again, today's uh, webinar po is entitled The Potential of Teaching and Learning Through Hybrid Education. So, of course, before we start discussing things about hybrid education, hybrid learning, or hybrid instruction, allow me first to give you the description of our webinar today. So, today's webinar aims to provide knowledge to educators on how to self-direct their learning process by choosing the learning methods and materials available 
to reach the curriculum learning objectives. More often than not by their teachers, we are given the academic freedom to choose how we want to teach our students. Diba? We have our own baga parang signature teaching strategies. We can also have our own, of course, uh, design our own assessment methods and then the like. However, we use all these things because we have one goal in mind. I uh, Yeah, one goal. And that is, of course, to teach the students and to help them become the best versions of themselves by being able to develop the skills that they need in order to become successful in the near future. So with this, my dear teachers, allow me to present to you our quote of the day. So dun po sa umaten sa ating mga previous sessions, you would always notice that I always start my webinars, my seminars, my CPD trainings with a quote of the day. So today's quote comes from Walter Lippmann. Sabi niya, when all think alike, then no one is actually thinking. Nothing is constant in permanent in the field of education. Everything changes. Di ba po? Lahat talaga nagbabago. So the use of the, for example, the use of the different teaching methodologies that made the best and outstanding teachers before will no longer be the very reasons why they would still be the most effective and efficient teachers nowadays. Kasi nga po, nagbabago at nagbabago po talaga ang teachers. Although we have to recognize that every teacher has his or her own pay day of teaching. May kanakan na po tayong style, may kanakan na tayong strengths, may kanakan na tayong weaknesses. However, my dear teachers, despite having our own strength, despite recognizing our own weaknesses, there are still a lot of things in the 21st century that remain unpredictable. And nowadays, kahit yung mga unpredictability na yun, may isang bagay po na makakatulong sa atin. How would we be able to prepare ourselves to face this uh, uh, certain situations? Simply po, look at this picture. This editorial cartoon is actually uh, drawn by my chief cartoonist in the Quinian, the official student publication of USC Junior High School. In this, official, in this specific cartoon, uh, you would be seeing a student trying, to, of course, to reach his diploma. So may kita po natin dito, teachers. This is a very powerful uh, editorial cartoon. Why? Because one, it sends the message of how learners, all the learners, uh, want to achieve. Ano po, uh, what what the, all the learners want to achieve? Ano po bang gusto nila ma-achieve? Why are they studying? Because they want to have that diploma. Because they want to graduate. Because they want, of course, to have those specific uh, recognitions, achievements that would help them, of course, reach all their endeavors in life. However, right now, for example, in this situation that we are facing the COVID-19 pandemic, learning, unfortunately, is being hindered. However, because of the different innovations in education, like, for example, the one that we see in the picture, internet, Wi-Fi, these 21st century tools are assisting us in fulfilling our mission. And what is our mission? To help those students reach the goal. So in today's webinar, po, this is what we're going to talk about. I am going to talk about how these technological tools can help us, uh, help, uh, can help us, of course, uh, assist our students to become better individuals and, of course, to become more equipped with the skills that they will be needing. All right. So my dear teachers, this is a this is a picture that I actually showed that I also showed last time. Why am I showing this whenever I discuss 21st century education? Why? Because this picture is very powerful. Of course, when you talk about gears, machines, pag may isang bagay po dyan na nawala, pag may isang bagay po dyan na hindi gumana, automatically, everything would not work. So this is a very powerful picture. So now what would make that gear, the third gear, the blue one, success, work? Simple lang po. The creativity and the innovation gears. So kung pagagalawin po natin yung success, we need to be creative. We need to be innovative. Because if we're not going to be creative and innovative, then we do not expect academic success from our students. All right? So my dear teachers, according to Inzuk, sabi niya, if we want to understand the world of our students, then we must be willing to immerse ourselves in those worlds. We must embrace the new digital reality. If the teachers cannot relate, if the teachers don't get it, then we won't be able to make schools relevant to the current and future needs of the digital generation. Teachers, i-highlight po natin yung digital reality. Alam niyo po, my dear teachers, this is something 
uh, that we ha- that we need to learn how to kumbaga parang i-welcome natin, i-embrace talaga natin. We need to think that this digital reality would be our friend and not our enemy as we try of course to assist our students to become better. Teachers, if we would be able to understand that our learners today are part of the digital generation, then we will never be able to equip them the skills that they will be needing. Because for us to be able to fulfill our functions, our responsibilities, then it is a must for us to understand who they are, what they want, and what they need. Alright? So my dear teachers, ang mga susante po natin, tatandaan po natin, gone are the days that we just need to develop them to be good with English, with math, with science, with TLE, and other learning areas. Right now, teachers, marami tayong specific na obligasyon. Specifically, we need to train our students to become critical thinkers and problem solvers. I'd like to believe that uh, each student, actually kahit tayo, we make a lot of decisions every now and then. We make hundreds or maybe more than that uh, every now and then. So for example, ako po, every time I will, uh, every time a new day comes in, ang una kong tanong, una kong problema, unang desisyon na gagawin ko, what will I do? Babangon na ba ako or five minutes pa? If you're being critical, you would analyze. Okay, if I'm going for five minutes, uh, may danger ba yun? Pwede ba mag-extend pa yung tulog ko? Or what? So being critical, of course, would help our students see the value of making decisions, see the value of problem solving. Teachers, the example that I gave earlier, sobrang mababaw. But despite the ganun po yun, we have to understand that no matter how little these decisions are, these things would still significantly matter. Next, of course, we teach our students the communication skills. Mahirap po to teachers. I'd like to believe that not only in the Philippines, even in America, in the other countries, public speaking, sobrang mababa po talaga ang mga, ang mga kabataan ngayon. Why? Maybe because they're too inclined to the use of technology. So this is a challenge for us. How would we develop our students to become effective communicators? Considering that there's no profession in this world that exists without having the need to communicate then we really see the need of teaching them how to become uh, good in terms of communication. Right? Third, of course, creativity and innovation. If we uh, need to be creative, if we need to be innovative in terms of how we deal with our students, how we teach them, then definitely it is something that we should also teach our students. Our students must also employ creativity and innovation in everything that they do. And of course, lastly, is the skill of collaboration. Let me share to you one of my practice. Ako po, uh, during the time that I actually saw, kumbaga, the, for the first time, yung force system definitely so collaboration, sabi ko, you know what, it's hard. Because one, you cannot choose the people na makakatrabaho mo. You cannot choose the people na makakasama mo. So you need to learn how to deal with different kinds of people. So when I had that realization in mind, I, I thought of, okay, so how would I make my students experience this? This is, the best, this is a very reason why whenever I have group works, group activities, I always ask my students to come up with new groups. From uh, If I can, bawat activity iba-iba yan. Why? Let's say, for example, first activity, uh, that student would be grouped to someone who's an introvert. So sooner or later, if he would know how to interact with that introvert, then during the time that he would graduate and he would encounter an introvert, sabi na, ah, ganito lang, ganito may pag sa introvert. What about, for example, may nakasama siyang medyo bossy? So I would also have another groupings para makasama sa medyo bossy. So of course, when you're working, it's inevitable. Sometimes you would meet persons na hindi mo talaga magigisuhan, but you have no choice but to work with them, right? And you have to maintain, of course, professionalism. So how can you prepare your students for these things? Simple lang po. You let them experience these things. You let them talk. You let them meet. You let them work with different people, with different kinds of people as early as now. So however, teachers, itong forces na to, this our job does not end here. Marami pa po tayong dapat ma-develop. The students right now, kaya po medyo mas mahirap po ang curriculum natin, is primarily because the demands of the curriculum these days is are, are, are compared to how it used to be, mas mataas po talaga. Why? Because our students also need to become good innovators, self-directed learners, globally aware individuals, civically engaged, uh, financially and economically literate, information and media literate, critical thinkers, and then the like. In other words po, my dear teachers, napakadaming competencies. The question is, paano? We're only given limited time inside the classroom. We don't live with them 24-7. 
Pero ang daming hinihiling sa atin na maturo sa ating mga estudyante. The question now is, how do we do this? Paano nga po ba, teachers? Let us try to have a very simple game. I'm pretty sure right now, most of you are holding your pens, are holding, of course, papers. If not, you are in, you are ha, holding your laptop, raising your laptop, your mobile phones. So what we're going to do po is that let's just play, let's just play a very simple game. This is what we call an alphabet game. In this alphabet game, so I have here four words po. Isulat po natin itong four words na ito sa papers natin. Kindly write skills, kindly write knowledge, kindly write hard work, and kindly write attitude. Isulat po natin itong apat na ito, my dear teachers. Ayan po. Skills, knowledge, hard work, and attitude. And later on, through this alphabet game, we're going to answer the question earlier. Sabi natin kanina, how would we be able to achieve all those competencies? Hindi naman tayo si... Uh, Superman. Hindi naman tayo si Darna. Now, how? Paano po? Ano po bang kailangan natin? So, nasulat na po ba natin, teachers? Alright. Ngayon po nasulat na po natin, I, I like to believe na tapos na po. I will show you the next slide. Next slide po, of course, contains the value of each letter. So, for example po, skills. Letter S is equal to 19. Letter K is equal to 11. So, add po natin yun. 19 plus 11 plus so on and so forth. So, I'll give you po one minute to do this. After one minute po, we'll do our own checking po. Again po, four words po yun ha. Skills, knowledge, hard work, and attitude. Sige po, I'll give you one minute po. Alright, so while waiting po, uh, habang tayo po ay nag-aantay pa po mag matapos mag-compute ng ibang teachers, let me read some of the comments po that we have here. So far po, 5,000 viewers na po tayo and considering that this is the second uh, streaming na po ng uh, topic na to, definitely this is a good number. Ayan po. So, ayan. Puro hashtag ang nakita ko. Learn as one PH. Right? Sabi ni Sir Aljon Landingin, we learn as one and no one should be left behind. One goal, one purpose. Yes. And definitely, we hope to achieve this one through the use of various technologies. Alright? So, I think po, tapos na po tayo mag-compute. So, now let us try to see, of course, the scores that we have right here. Okay? So, let's start po. Let's start po, my dear teachers, with skills. For skills po, we have 82. I think tama naman siguro karamihan if not all. Next po, of course, we have knowledge, 96. And then after that, we have hard work, 98. And finally, of course, we have attitude, which amounts, of course, to 100. Now, this specific activity is very simple. But this activity po is very powerful. Why? One, skills. Teachers, Lahat po tayo graduate ng apat na taon sa kolehiyo. Some of us, of course, uh, graduated with, kumbaga, may master's degree pa. Baka yung iba po, meron pa mga doctoral degree. So definitely, we have the skills. We're, we also, we, we attend training just like this webinar. So definitely po, our, our skills for me, this cannot be questioned. Knowledge po, I'd like to believe that everyone is knowledgeable. Di ba, content expert naman po tayo. We wouldn't be or baga teaching specific uh, subjects, learning areas, if we're not content experts. Hard work, sa dami ng ginagawa natin teachers, di ba? Sabi nga nilang, asawa natin ay mga papel. Di ba po? Hard work, uh, I'd like to believe also that all the teachers are hardworking. Pero po, to be honest with you, my dear teachers, I'd like to be brutally frank. I, I don't want to sugarcoat. There are a lot of teachers who are skilled. There are a lot of teachers who are knowledgeable. There are a lot of teachers who consider themselves hardworking. But even if you have those things, if you do not have the right attitude, then you will never be able to develop all the competencies needed for needed by the students. Why? Because for you to be able to do that, you need to have the right attitude, the right attitude to embrace change. And of course, when we talk about these changes in education, this can be reflected in the methodologies, in the assessment, uh, teaching strategies, even in the curriculum. So these are changes that we must adapt. If not now, then hopefully, definitely soon. All right? Let us remember, my dear teachers, 
that all of us, of course, are surrounded with 21st century teacher, teacher tools. So in your screen, may kita niyo po dyan, meron pong lumalabas na Word Cloud, Twitter, Portfolio, Facebook, Blogging, uh, Lesson Plans, Skype, and then the like. Even Zoom, di ba? You might be asking, oh, sir, why are we having this one? For example, right now, no, you're teaching us, of course, through our screens. We can do this face-to-face. -face. Meron bang kaibahat? Yes po, meron po. Why? Because right now, of course, after this, you can do a replay, you can watch a replay of what I'm saying. So if you're a student, na hirapan kang itinihin, balikan mo yung sinasabi ko, and then that would be good for you because you'll be given another chance, of course, to under understand things better. Let's say, for example, uh, you're curious about something, then you can also do research uh, ng mabilisan because you have access to technology. So in other words, my dear teachers, all this 21st century teacher tools. These are weapons, these are armors that we can use to equip our students with the skills that they will be needing to be a notch above the rest. Always remember, my dear teachers, you are a mentor and not a tormentor. Let's not make, uh, let's not make learning uh, tragic. Let's not make learning traumatic. Let's not make learning boring to our students. Instead, let's make it fun, engaging, entertaining, and something that the students would want to have every now and then. Tatandaan po natin yan, teachers, all right? Now, my dear teachers, allow me to present to you this picture. So this picture, of course, embodies, shows the 20th century. When you say 20th century, of course, may kita po natin, one is a teacher-led instruction. So teacher talk. Teacher does all the talking. Sources of information would either come from the books or from the teacher. And all the students would listen to the teacher. As the teacher proceeds to the next lesson, regardless, is all the students were able to understand, wala silang choice because it's a one-size-fits-all instruction. So looking at the picture, you would see parang may mga students natin nakatingin sa bintana and then the light because maybe the students are not really, uh, are having a hard time trying to, of course, sustain their attention uh, with regards to their lesson. On the other hand, the 21st century teaching is a classroom looks like this one. Here you would be seeing, for example, po, nakita niyo po sa bandang likod, yung may babae at lalaki po na estudyante. How many teachers do we have there? We already have three. Who are these three teachers? One, the laptop. Two, the girl student. And three, the boy student. How did they become teachers? Because, my dear teachers, whenever our students are able to have uh, engagements, for example, uh, conversations, uh, when they express their opinion, of course, they check if these things are valid. And they can do this, of course, online. So by doing this, of course, they're able not just to uh, not, not just to answer the assessment tools that they're going to give, but also to apply what they actually learn and share with others. In front po, may kita niyo po, teachers, yung dalawa po sa dyan na nag-virtual reality, yung parang meron pong salamin sa, sa bandang mata po nila. So why is that possible in 21st century teaching? Because virtual reality, my dear teachers, ito po yung uh, uh, pagsinuot mo po, para kang nasa 3D, para may kita mo na nasa ibang dimension ka. So in other words, it gives the students authentic experiences. And if they're authentic experiences, then we have to expect that memory retention, memory retention of the lessons would be longer. Not only that, meron din po iba't ibang technology. Uh, the other day po, I discussed augmented reality. I had a Facebook learning live session, of course, as still under Vival. Pinakita ko po dun how the books and the tablets can serve as teachers on their own. Na may formative test, na may lalabas din po na uh, 3D images na magtuturo sa mga bata and then the like. So this is 21st century. Learning anytime, anywhere. All right. Now, my dear teachers, so as we try to, uh, as I try to show you this picture, I'd like to emphasize the significance difference, the significant differences po. In the old style, teacher-centered transmission, again po, it's teacher talk. In a new style, collaboration-oriented creation, there are a lot of teachers, so that makes it student-centered. Sir, question po, does it mean po ba na yung old style teacher-centered transmission hindi na po natin gagamitin talaga totally. Actually, no po. Why? Because today I'm going to talk about hybrid education. As I try to talk about hybrid education, you would be seeing a combination of both worlds. So, but before we are, before we finally start discussing things po, dun sa concepts mo talaga ng hybrid education, let us try po 
developers to understand what it means to learn in the digital age. So one, learning in the digital age, of course, is interest-driven. When you say it's interest-driven, definitely it's really engaging. It's really entertaining. It's really motivating for our learners. Hindi yung tipong papasok sila, papasok na naman. Right? Second, of course, it's goal-oriented. My dear teachers, natandaan po natin, of course, uh, uh, that we have learning competencies that we need to meet. Uh, by the way, my dear teachers, ito po, i-remind ko lang din po, ah, we do not sacrifice the content of the lesson just because we want to use certain technologies or forms of technology. We have to remember by dear teachers that content is always premium. It's very important, right? So again, another, of course, characteristics of 21st century learning or learning in the digital age is accessibility. Accessibility, why? Because you need not go to school to learn. You need not meet your teacher. What you need, of course, is a wireless device, sometimes offline, sometimes online, because 21st century education makes learning available anytime, anywhere. So, but before we really uh, explore more about 21st century education, magkano muna tayo ng onting throwback, all right? So, what about uh, this one? So, traditional lesson preparation. How do the teachers in the past prepare their lessons? One, two tasks. One, Pagkikisin na umaga or the day before, okay, what will I teach today? That's the first thing to do. Ano ang tuturo ko? After that, deciding how to deliver the subject matter effectively. How do I want to uh, present my lesson? Of course, along with comes along uh, with that, of course, would be uh, gathering essential content, sourcing for a good textbook, and then transmitting them in the most efficient manner to ensure that the syllabus is covered within the semester. Right? So before major teachers, ganyan lang. Kung napansin mo po, wala halos na kalagay na parang question na parang decide on how to teach the lesson based on what the students want. Right? Why? Because before, it's teacher-centered. So all the students need to do, of course, is to sit and listen to the teachers while the teachers do all the talking. Measure of effectivity before, one, when students pay attention during the lessons, whenever there are class discussions, if the students participate, then isipin ni teacher, ay, okay na, naintindihan na nila. Right? But right now, even if all the students are reciting their hands, that will never be, ako baga, an assurance. I mean, it could be an assurance, pero that's not, that would never be enough for you to be able to conclude that your students can apply the skills that they are learning from you. Right? And of course, when, they are, when the students pass their exams, assessment tools at the end of a class discussion. So more often than not, of course, these are pen and paper exams. But right now, of course, we have to understand this that these pen and paper exams are still insignificant. However, the use of performance tasks, product-based assessments, pro uh, performance-based assessments are already more significant. Bakit po? Because our curriculum is no longer knowledge-based. It's already skills-based. Right? So, my dear teachers, of course, when you talk about traditional lesson preparation, yung mga pinakitang practices earlier, hindi yun mali before. Why? Because those strategies fit the learning styles of the students before. But before also, of course, may mga certain issues na din dyan. Kahit na sabi natin nag-fit siya sa learning style nila, na, natin, nung mga sudyante pa tayo. Right? So, one, what, what would be the downside? This way of teaching focuses on the organization of information and of course, uh, it gives little attention to how the information will be learned. So it therefore supports only the learning of foundational knowledge and that tends to be short-lived and does not meet the requirements of the educational needs of today. In other words po, my dear teachers, ang focus lang po nung curriculum dati, nung style ng traditional lesson procedure dati is that the students will get the, the content. Regardless kung paano. Paano ba? Gusto ba ni teacher copy and answer lang? Copy lang ba? Mag-lecture ba siya? And then na lang. Uh, which results, of course, na yung memory span, nung, uh, yung, short, uh, yung, yung pagkakatanda, memory retention, uh, nung mga bata dun sa lesson will be shortly. Why? Because they're not able to create authentic experiences. So meaning to say, if they, if they do not create authentic experiences, experiential learning, which uh, it would it all uh, uh, it means that it does not meet the requirements of the educational needs of today. This is the very reason why there are a lot of new teaching styles, teaching methods, and teaching strategies. All right. So now 
Be- uh, before we specifically talk about the strategies, tinan mo na natin, ano nga ba ang 21st century teacher? What is a 21st century teacher? And what makes a teacher an effective 21st century educator? One, according to Alex Vitrella, sabi niya, an effective teacher is a learning facilitator. Take note what teacher is, ah, facilitator. So if we say facilitator, that only means that you are not the ones who are giving a lot of lectures. Diba? Hindi na din po tayo. Kumbaga, we don't take the center stage anymore. Instead, we facilitate the activities that we design for our students. Second, of course, we are content experts. Teachers na ito naalan natin, we talk about content experts. We have to remember, and we must never forget, that learning never stops. And that learning should never stop. Teachers, I just want to share a story of a friend. Meron akong uh, kaklase dati ng college. Sabi niya, alam mo Zoran? Sabi niya, uh, meron ako isang estudyante, nagkaroon ako ng problema. Then I was asking, why? What happened? Uh, my friend was telling me, uh, she was teaching science, by the way. My friend was telling me, sabi niya, kasi one of my students asked, sabi niya, ma'am, how many planets do we have in the solar system? So of course, uh, my class, my batchmate rather, sabi niya, we have nine, sabi niya ganun. And then the student asked, are you sure we have nine? And then the teacher said, yes, we have nine. Of course, being the professional that she is, she explained things further and she even showed uh, the proof po sa libro na nakalagay na nine lang. And then the student asked, so teacher who's lying, you in that book or the, this, or the specific episode that I watched in the National Geographic Channel or Discovery Channel? I, I, I can, I can I remember vividly na po. Then, si teacher, nagulat siya. Why? Because during that specific time pala, that was the time when Pluto, Pluto was not considered a planet anymore. But if I'm not mistaken, parang, uh, parang right time, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Pluto is, is already considered a planet again. Pero during those days, parang medyo na, na, nawala. So you know what happened? The student uh, showed lack of attention. Maga parang nawalan talaga ng gana yung bata. This is the very reason why we have to ensure that the content that we, del- we deliver the things that we give to our students are not only valid, are not only accurate, but always po at all times, syempre po, dapat sugurado tayong tama. All right? So aside from that, my dear teachers, of course, 21st century teachers are collaborative leaders. Ako po, naniniwala ako, my dear teachers, that we have a lot of partners. Of course, one, we have the administrators. We work with them. We collaborate with them. I'd like to believe that we know our students better because we are the ones facing them. With this, my dear teachers, we can propose a specific programs for our students to our administrators. And definitely, if the administrators would see the very reason why we're doing this, they would eventually support you. Okay? Aside from this, of course, our partners, the parents of our students, whenever there are specific programs that we are try- that we want to propose to our children, uh, to, to the students we want to, to use in dealing with them, we inform them. Why? Because they might misinterpret us. Because during the time na nag-aaral pa sila, iba yung sistema. And they would be thinking that that should still be the same thing na ini-implement ngayon. But they would not understand that things have already changed drastically in the field of education if we're not going to tell them. So we have to ensure that we're collaborating with other people who can help us in forming our students. Next po, of course, Culturally competent educators. Alam nyo, my dear teachers, dapat we have to be careful. Lalo na po ngayon, di ba, right now, we're facing a pand- pandemic. I do understand the social media functions as humans' emotional outlet. So sometimes po, we post rant, we post our opinion, and then the like. But we have to remember po, let us not forget that we are uh, opinion leaders. So whatever we say, our students believe. Whatever we believe, our students do. Ah, uh, kumbaga, because we're opinion leaders. So teachers, dapat po mag-ingat din tayo kasi baka mamaya we're not teaching them the right things. We teach them how to be critical but we don't really uh, impose to them the specific things that they should actually believe. Right? So that is of course, and those are of course the things that we have to remember when it comes to uh, the 21st century uh, teachers. Right? Now, in the traditional model, <laughs> teachers as providers of knowledge. Students, of course, receive nearly all instructions from one or more teachers. And ano po ginagawa ng estudyante? They sat passively in their seats and had little or no control 
over their learning experience. So this is the old times. That the po teachers, ang sajante wala silang control. If the if the teacher wants uh, them to do this today, the students would do that. But teachers, that's in the past po. Right now po teachers is a different thing. Why? Because right now po in the 21st century, we must understand that students must take responsibility of their own learning. So let let us not take the freedom po of these people to choose. All right. Next po. So 21st century model. <clears throat> Students as active pursuers of knowledge. So right now, in the 21st century, students are given greater control and more active roles in their learning. So to the point po na pag hindi nila ginawa yung responsibility nila, of course, they need to learn how to face the repercussions, the consequences of their actions. So kung hindi sila makikinig, and then definitely, uh, their performance would actually suffer. All right? So next po, some learning involves teachers providing instruction at a brick and mortar classroom location and some involves uh, students learning independently at computers. Teachers, we have to understand that in the 21st century model, learning takes place anytime, anywhere. Hindi po kailangan katabi natin yung mga estudyante natin 24-7 for, for, for them to be able to facilitate learning. Why? Because the computers themselves can already serve as their teachers. Di ba po? So if they need more di ba po, knowledge, kasi nahihirapan sila, then they can use the computers to understand things better. If, if nakakurious sila, kung ano pa po yung enrichment tool as about it, then that's the time that we can actually have, of course, uh, allow them to explore these things also via the use of computers and other forms of technology. All right. Now, so hmm. now let us talk about the different technology-based teaching methods. So before, of course, this is specific slide. If you notice po, diniscuss ko po muna sa inyo teachers what, what are the differences between traditional way of learning and teaching uh, and of course the 21st century way of teaching and learning. Why? Because the strategies that I'm going to talk about right now are not strategies that uh get read nung talagang old times, nope. But the strategies that I'm going to show right now are the com are, uh, of course uses kumbaga, use the combination of both worlds the world of online learning and the world of traditional learning all right so let us start po so here of course sa screen niyo po you would be seeing the online learning spectrum so therefore the first two of course is categorized for less online and the last two categorized po for more online for less online po, you would be seeing face-to-face -face communication and web-enhanced blended uh, learning. And for more online, of course, we have hybrid education and online learning. So ano po ba yung pagkakaiba ng apat? Simple lang, teachers. Let's put them into numbers. Kumbaga, let's be subjective po para at least mas makita natin kung paano siya ginagawa. When you say face-to-face, 100% -face, po, teachers, ng klase, face-to-face -face ginagawa. If not 100%, we can say, for example, 95 to 90 to 95% sa, sa loob ng klase ginagawa, face-to-face -face sessions. Then maybe 5% are given online assignments and then the like. So that is what you call face-to-face. -face. Or if not, 100% face-to-face talaga. When you say web-enhanced or blended, my dear teachers, this, this is a misconception po. Ang misconception po kasi palagi is that blended learning is called hybrid learning. Yes, true. It's the, actually, it's true that it's also called hybrid learning. However, may pagkakaiba po yung dalawa. Although maliit lang naman po, pero may pagkakaiba yung dalawa. What is the difference po? When you say blended learning, my dear teachers, class sessions take place in a traditional classroom. But technology is used to facilitate activities, deliver content, and or assess students. In other words po, ganun pa rin po, nagmimit tayo sa loob ng klase. And then yung mga assessment tools, yung mga additional outputs po natin, that's the time that we use the online platform. So pag, pag binagay po natin to sa numbers, guro pwede po natin sabihin na parang 70% face-to-face, 30% online, or maybe 60% face-to-face, 40% -face, uh, online. Pag sinabi po natin hybrid, on the other hand, it should be 50-50. If not 50-50, 60-50. 60% online and 40% face-to-face. Mas marami po yung online or if not 50-50 po, gaya na sinasabi ko kanina. Why? Because when you talk about hybrid education, it refers to an online and face-to-face -face instruction that are integrated 
with a substantial amount of set time in traditional classroom substituted with internet-based activities. So in other words po, for example, kunyari po my dear teachers, sabihin natin kunyari, one hour po yung class mo. So one hour class mo teachers, ginawa, ang, ginawa ng, ang ginawa nyo po is that 30 minutes lang sila sa loob ng classroom. Yung 30 minutes po, for example, iniipon mo yun na dapat online sila. Ganito, ganyan. Possible po yun. Or pwede naman for example, kunyari this week, face-to-face -face sila. Then after that, two days after noon, uh, online po sila. So that's what we call hybrid education. Right? Next po, of course, is online education or online learning. And this type of online learning spectrum, nearly all instruction, interaction, and activities take place online. May or may not include the face-to-face -face oriented or proctored exams. So para at ito po yung opposite ng face-to-face. If sa face-to-face, pwede 100-0, 95-0, Five or 90-10. Parang ganun din po sa online. It can be zero face-to-face, 100% -face, online. Or pwede naman yung uh, 5% face-to-face and then 95% online. So, if you will be asking me, Sir, anong ideal sa atin? Anong magandang gamitin? Actually po, to be honest, I'm not really the best person to ask because you know who's the best person to ask? Kayo po. Because one, you know your lessons better than me. Second, of course, most importantly, ito po yung hindi ko masasagot. You know what the students need, what your students need, and what their students actually want. So kayo po talaga ang magde-design dito. However, whenever uh, you have this kind of strategies in mind, the first thing that you need to do, of course, is to have a faculty meeting. Faculty po meeting po muna tayo, and then with, maybe with administrators, and then after that, do some curriculum mapping. Because not all topics po, I think, lalo na considering sa atin, sa Pilipinas, that we're not really, kumbaga, very prepared naman po for these things. Then, uh, siyempre slowly but surely, pero we have to understand that mastering these things, uh, learning how to use these things, these strategies, does not happen overnight. Okay po? So now, teachers, let's talk about hybrid education. So when you say hybrid education, hybrid learning, or hybrid instruction, ito po yan. Okay? So it combines face-to-face -face and online teaching into one cohesive experience. It reduces the amount of sit time traditional face-to-face -face course and moves more of the course delivery online. So in other words po, my dear teachers, hindi po nawawala si face-to-face -face at hindi rin po mawawala siyempre si online teaching. So one cohesive experience, meaning to say, magkasama po siya, sabay po siya. Hindi po pwedeng wala yung isa. Why? Because ang ginawa po is that if dati 100% face-to-face, ay 50% po nun, tatanggalin, moves the course delivery online. Right? So it allows a flexible approach to learning process performed collaboratively by the student the teacher, and the participating experts or institutions. Teachers, we have to understand that when we talk about flexible approach, it must allow students, of course, to choose how uh, to choose the specific way on how they will be learning things. You would be able to address the questions, what does the student, uh, what do the students want? How the students want to do it, and then uh, when, and then where, di ba po? So that is a first flexible approach through specific strategies like hybrid learning. We're able to address, of course, the different uh, preferences of our students nowadays, right? So talk about hybrid education. It's a misconception that the most students are merely watching an online lecture. Hindi po ganun teachers. Bakak po kasi yung iba sa atin ang iniisip. Bakapag upload lang po tayo ng video. Tapos manonoorin po ng mga bata, hybrid learning na. No. Why? Because just like face-to-face -face classes, hybrid learning, uh, specifically the online uh, lectures po, the online uh, platform po, should also offer interactions. So these interactions could be done through threads, through uh, video calls. For example, po ito pong Zoom, di ba? May interaction po tayo, nagko-comment po kayo, and then the like. So there are a lot of applications that we can use, of course, to have these specific things. In Vibal po, if, uh, they have, of course, Bismart uh, School. They have Bismart Courseware. Yung mga ano po na yan, applications po na yan. Uh, pwede pong ma-upload lahat ng PowerPoint nyo, lahat ng activities nyo online, tapos may access po agad ng mga subsante, may inform po sila pag meron na, and then after that, of course, when they answer it, yung scores po, nandun na din agad. So it allows you, of course, to monitor also the progress of your students. And of course, to have online interactions with them. Hybrid learning gives students the privilege to understand 
and to explore the real-world issues through authentic learning experiences facilitated in an online learning environment. Again, my dear teachers, the key to an effective 21st century education, of course, learn a, a 21st century way of teaching the students, of course, is to ensure po, dapat po palagi at all times, that we are able to provide them activities that would give them authentic learning experiences. Let us not forget to connect our lessons into reality, into the real world issues. Bakit po? Because the students would only be able to discover the value of everything that we're teaching them if they know why are why, why are they actually studying these things. So, mas mahalagahan lang po nila pag naintindihan po nila kung bakit po natin ito ginagawa at bakit po natin ito pinuturo. And fortunately, with the use of different tools, educational tools, 21st century teaching and learning tools, we can do this, even online po. Gaya po ng sinabi ko kanina, for example po sa Bimal, meron silang augmented reality. Other products po, meron din po tayo tinaw na VR, virtual reality, and of course, there are a lot of applications online like Kahoot, uh, Mentimeter, and then the like that you can also use, of course, to facilitate uh, online discussions. Right? So now, my dear teachers, sabi ko kanina, when you talk about hybrid learning, dalawa yan, classroom instruction time, and of course, you also have the online engagement. For classroom instruction time, most of you would be thinking, ah, sir, ito yung time na magdi-discuss palagi si teacher. Yes, that could be. That's possible. However, that doesn't mean that you have to give a lot of lectures. Why? Because classroom instruction time can also be dedicated for students to be engaged in authentic collaborative learning experiences. So in other words, the assessment can also be done inside the classroom. Diba po? Kasi when assessments are done inside the classroom, you have more time to assist them, to provide various needs and preferences ng bawat learner po. Next, it can excel with independent exploration, innovative collaboration, information and technology literacy, and content mastery. Why? Let's say, for example, uh, kunari po, we're having our uh, kunari, we're having our Araling Pandipunan class today. So habang nasa classroom po tayo, so when we're having hybrid learning, ibig sabihin po ba nun, magtuturo lang si teacher using PowerPoint and the like? No. Pwede pong, for example, sa bahay, ang online nyo is that we forwarded videos. Pagdating po sa school, may activity kayo na ipapagawa, and then habang ginagawa nila yun, they can still have access online to online resources na magagamit po nila while they're discussing things on how they're going to perform it, on how they're going to produce the product, or the specific performance that the teachers, tayo po, ang hini ay hiningi sa kanila. Right? So that is, of course, for the classroom instruction time. What about for online components? What do you do online? Ang online po ba, kailangan videos lang, kailangan assessment lang. Tandaan po natin, teachers, when we talk about online components, the, the, the beauty of this is that it promotes self-paced learning. And when you say self-paced learning, it uses rich media resources provided through the internet. So, pwedeng collaborative group learning using synchronized or face-to-face -face settings. So, pag sinabing self-paced po, siyempre hawak po nila yung sariling oras nila. Minsan, for example, siyempre, minsan wala din tayo sa mood, di ba? Wala tayo sa mood, pwedeng, ah, sige, hindi ko muna sasagutan. Mamaya na lang. Ah, sige, ganito, ganyan. However, my dear teachers, ako po, personal advice ko lang naman. Uh, when we talk about online, there are a lot of distractions. So, uh, may social media, may mga online games, andyan din ang mga online streaming ng manonood ka movie, series, k-drama, Netflix, and the like. So, my dear teachers, it is always good to give them a timetable. Bigyan din rasa ng timetable so that they can also uh, manage their time wisely. Kasi baka mamaya, sample, o, di ka nagbigay ng deadline, tapos deadline mo na ng grade, sabay-sabay mo hiningi, paano po nila mapaproduce kung hindi nila nasimulan from the start? So, even if we are promoting self-paced learning, of course, we have to remind our students from time to time and encourage them, of course, to do these things ahead of time. Right? So, it can include multimedia, uh, enhanced content and channels for ongoing discussion. Alam niyo po, teachers, napakadami pong applications online. Kailangan lang po natin explore talaga kung ano-ano pong applications ang pwede natin gamitin. Sa Vibal pa lang po, sobrang dami ng application na pwede natin gamitin. What more pa po? At kung ano pa po yung binibigay sa atin ng, uh, of course, technology. We just need, of course, to be brave enough uh, and to be open-minded to give these things a try. Right? So, another thing po, when it comes to online component, we have to remember po, 
that it offers opportunities to develop a more sustained and richer exploration of a material rather than the more rapid par interaction of a face-to-face -face classroom. And students who may not be comfortable speaking in a room full of people often blossom as strong contributors online. Alam niyo po, my dear teachers, you might be telling me, alam mo sir, hindi nila yung kaya. Sa klase kayo, hindi sila nagsasalita eh. Do you think you would be, they would be interacting online? Ako po, yes, they would. Why? Because it's their language. They are more comfortable in using technology than us. So, marami pong bata na mahiyain kasi hindi sila sanay magsalita. Hindi sila sanay na mag-raise ang thoughts nila face-to-face. -face. But considering that technology is their language, of course, the use of technology, it's in it for them. They're born for it. Then I don't think... Uh, then I don't think that it would be a hindrance for them not to be able to, uh, of course, uh, state their opinion, share their ideas, their thoughts, and the like. So, teachers in 21st century education, kahit ano pong galing natin sa alam, lahat, na alam natin lahat ng teaching strategies, if we wouldn't be able to know how to trust our students' capabilities, then we wouldn't be able to fulfill our job. Lahat po ng 21st century teaching strategies, nagsisimula po yan sa pagtitiwala sa mga sudyante natin na kaya nilang gawin yun. Because we have to put the responsibilities po sa shoulders nila. If they will not perform, then let them face the repercussions, the consequences of their actions. Because sooner or later po, matututo at matututo pa rin naman po yung mga yan. Alright? Now, I have here with me a table that would show specific activities that could be done face-to-face -face and that could be done also online. For face-to-face, -face, of course, I have here establishing social presence and support, non-verbal communication, defining as assignments, negotiating expectations, and so on and so forth. So, pag sinabi natin face-to-face, -face, kadalasan ito po yung mga may gestures, ito yung mga may non-verbal communication, ito yung mga kailangan ng sobrang pag-uusap, like explanation, uh, giving of specific tasks, so that immediate feedback can be can be can be given. However, on the other hand, when we talk about online, this is good for group cohesion, collaboration, and support. Some of us are thinking, "Ay, we, pwede pala yon. Nakala ko ang group activity dapat face to face. No po, teachers. Pwede po natin gamitin ng online platform for a uh, group activities. How, of course, uh, there are a lot of uh, so one social media platforms. Although we have to take a look at it. Ano po bang social media policies ng school natin? Pumapayag ba ang school na gamitin ng social media? Or yun ba ang last resort ng school uh, in terms of facilitating online activities? Next, of course, is reflective on task discourse. Why? Because you have a lot of time to reflect. Unlike in face-to-face, -face, limited yung oras eh. So you're pressure ka na tapusin yung task. Unlike in online, if you want to reflect as long as, 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 long as you want, kahit ilang oras ka pa mag-reflect, you have all the time in the world to do so. So bro broader... Uh, participation discussion. So how is this possible? Paano mo nasabi na mas malalim ang discussion online? Why? Because they, they can access different sources. Di ba po? So, ang bata, ayaw na na, ayaw na, na namamali. So, bago yun sumagot, titignan din muna kung nila kung tama sila. However, in face-to-face -face classes mo kasi, wala silang option na ganun. Unlike in online, they have that option. So, before they answer, they would try to check first if valid or accurate may sagot nila, which allows it, of course, to critically analyze these things. Self-paced learning, self-assessment quizzes, automatic grading of multiple choice uh, through the use of different application. Of course, iba, minsan, pag gumawa ka po ng exam, isang diretso lang po, after that po, ando na lahat ng sagot, di ba? Kapag parang lalabas agad yung sagot, lalabas agad yung score. That is, of course, the nature of generation C. They want instant feedback. In a matter of a click, dapat ando na yung feedback. So it create a content outline, something content, of course, into modules. So that is, of course, uh, online, of course. All right. Now, so now let us try to discuss the roles of teachers in hybrid classes. Okay. Now, uh, po na sinabi ko kanina, when during the time that I was comparing the 20th century and the 21st century classroom, of course, marami pong roles talaga ang nagbago. So one, of course, it played the role of facilitator. Uh, I mean, right now, we play the role of facilitators by assisting our students whenever it is necessary. Teachers, take a look at, take a look at this phrase po, ah, whenever necessary. Why? Because we do not offer spoon feeding in the 21st century anymore. We let them learn. Tayo po, nasa likod lang po tayo ng camera. So if they need help, then that's the time that we actually 
uh, do intervention. But we, but all we need to do, of course, is to facilitate the activities that we design for them. Next po, of course, it played the role of instructors by providing complementary lessons in line with the online courses of the students. So when you say role of instructors po, uh, ibig sabihin po ng teachers, of course, we do the instructional design of our lessons, di ba? We provide them complementary lessons and of course, online dapat and of course, offline din po. Right? So now, so what are the four properties of hybrid learning? So meron pong apat teachers. Kapag sa apat po na to teachers na wala yung isa, automatic, we cannot call it hybrid learning. Okay? One, it is a mix of collective learning and individual learning. So in other words po, dapat po may individual outputs and dapat din po may, may group outputs. Okay? Hindi po pwedeng individual lang po lahat. Hindi po pwede na nag-group lang lahat. Minsan nga may class outputs pa po. A mix of synchronous learning and asynchronous learning. So meron pong self-paced activities that allows the students to choose at the right time for them to answer, the right time for them to review their lessons, to, to try to study. And of course, meron din po tinatawag na synchronous. So either way po, pwede yung face-to-face, uh, -face, pwede rin po yung online discussion. All right? So bakit po kailangan may self-paced teachers? Because... It is 21st century, uh, 21st century teaching education way po of offering personalized education. So para po mas na, naibigyan na mas mahabang oras yung mga sabi natin na just slow learners na mas maintindihan yung specific topics and yung mga fast learners po para mabigyan na sila ng oras to explore more about the topics uh, being presented to them. Kahit na sabi natin, minsan yung enrichment tool po nila is mga goals ba yan na po na curriculum. Next, of course, is a mix of self-paced and group-paced learning. Again po, teachers, magsinaya po natin self-paced. Sabi nga po kanina, you let them uh, decide how they want to do it, when they want to do it. Ganun din po yung group-paced. As long as teachers and danger lang po nito, again po, magbigay po, po tayo kahit pa paano nang hindi nang po. Siguro, pwede hindi naman deadline tawag, timetable ba, para at least uh, they would be guided. Di ba po? Kasi yun nga po, uh, ang mga bata ngayon, ang generation ngayon, one of the problems that they have, more often than not, would always be time uh, management issues. Next, of course, is a mix of formal learning and non-informal learning. Face-to-face uh, -face po in online, of course, online platforms. All right? Now, so, what are the possible hybrid schedule classes? Paano po ba ito nagagawa? So, it can be quite diverse. You can create your own style as well. So, look at this one. One, pwedeng, for example, a couple of weeks face-to-face -face, and after that, one week sa lang online. Pwedeng, for example, face-to-face -face, and then after that, extended period, online na sila dire-diretso. Pwede rin, for example, yung three hours na class mo, may mo 45 minutes. And then, yung natitirang oras, students would be required to go online, pero gabi na. Okay? So that's possible as well. So you can create your own schedule. However, do not implement these things without consulting your administrators. You need to have a first faculty planning, uh, faculty meetings, and a first curriculum mapping before doing this. All right? So advantages of hybrid learning. One, of course, it offers flexibility to all learners. Why? Kasi po, kahit ano pong uh, oras na gusto niya, kung saan niya gagawin, pwede po. So, in other words po, it can be adjusted in accordance po dun sa mga pangangailangan ng mga bata. The learners, the course, or even other indicators po. Of course, uh, ano po mga resulta? Research actually proves that not only do students tend to prefer it as their format of choice, but the learning outcomes and academic achievements are stronger with hybrid than for either face-to-face -face or online teaching alone. In other words po, my dear teachers, Ang hybrid learning po not does not only make students more engaged, but proven na po that academic performance, academic achievement, mga stronger po academic performance or better po whenever the teachers use this kind of strategy. Parang for example po is augmented reality ng Vibal. They they conducted a survey, a study, which proved that the use of augmented reality technology applications, of course, boosted the students' engagement with regards to their lessons, allowing them to have a better uh, academic performance. All right? So, in reality, my dear teachers, despite the many benefits offered by hybrid learning, educators are still hesitant in following and applying the approach due to the drawbacks in terms of applicability 
integration and social effects to learners and cost restrictions. Siyempre, teachers, hindi rin natin may iwasan. Marami rin naman po talagang uh, dahilan kung bakit hindi pa tayo handa para dito. One, of course, yung gastos. Two, of course, are we prepared for this? Are we trained for this? However, yung epekto nito sa learners, baka medyo hindi pa tayo naniniwala sa technology. And of course, hindi mawawala dyan uh, the hesitance na yung, 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 yung feeling na sobrang hesitant tayo primarily because we don't want technology to replace us. Di ako? Kaya lang, my dear teachers, we have to understand that we should learn how to adapt these methods sooner or later because if we're not going to adapt these things, then our students will be left behind. Right? So my, I have your teachers samples of hybrid classes. One, look at this one. So yung blue-green po, ito po yung sa face-to-face. -face. Yung dark blue po, ito po yung sa uh, online po. So dito po sa first example, ang face-to-face -face po na si instructor po, si teacher nag-lecture. Nag-facilitate po ng class discussion. Doon po sa Facebook, sa online po, nagsagot ng classroom activities, online assignments, uh, sa Facebook, and may forum po for online discussion. So pwede po yan. That's one possible uh, way of implementing a hybrid class. Another one, of course, is instructor po places lectures online using voice over PowerPoint or streaming media for students to review. So in other words po, nagbaliktad. Si lecture po online naganap. How? By forwarding specific videos, recordings, PowerPoint presentations to the students that the students can watch repeatedly until such time that they're finally able to understand their lessons. And on the other hand po, yung face-to-face, -face, students subsequently in class, of course, uh, use the, uh, their uh, preliminary online materials to engage in face-to-face small -face group activities and discussions. So in other words po, yung mga naintindihan po nila online will be processed inside the classroom. So that is another possible uh, scenario po for a hybrid class. Another one po that we have here, students prepare small groups project online, post them to discussion forums for debate and revision. So in other words po, yung paggawa ng activity online po. However, the final presentation po would be done face-to-face. -face. There's no specifics naman po when it comes to choosing kung ano ang gusto mong online, ano ang gusto mong face-to-face. -face. Just like what I mentioned earlier, we know our students better, we know their needs, we know what they want, so we can make good, uh, better decisions po when it comes to this one. All right? So that is, of course, hybrid class, hybrid education, and hybrid instruction. Now, let me talk about flip classroom. Ito pong flip classroom, saka yung blended learning, sinama ko siya. Why? Para kasi itong magkakapatid, itong flip and then yung and then yung, yung blended tapos po yung hybrid. Although of course, uh, the time that we have right now, medyo tight na po tayo. So medyo dadaanan lang po natin siya para at least may idea tayo that flip classroom and blended learning are two different strategies din po. Do, uh, hindi rin po sa kaparehas ng hybrid learning, alright? So we talk about flip classroom as a pedagogical model in which the typical lecture and homework elements of a course are reversed. So ano po ba yung lectures na ginagawa natin yung kadalasan po sa school? So babalik na rin po natin. The lectures po, which gives the students the content po, would be done at home. How? Hindi po tayo pupunta sa mga bahay nila. Instead, uh, we can record short video lectures or if we cannot do that, then we can download lectures online. Ito po yung magiging sources of information. Ano po yung homework? Yung homework po yun yung mga sinasagutan. This would be done inside the classroom. Why? Because it would help us assess our students and see what they need. And eventually, of course, hopefully po, uh, address uh, the difficulties. Mabigyan po na intervention po, nahihirapan. And kung nadadalian, of course, mabigyan din ng enrichment activities. Right? So that is a flipped classroom. In a flipped classroom, of course, we do not do a lot of lectures. Okay po? We function as coaches. And we put more responsibility for learning in the shoulders of our students. Why more responsibility? Can you imagine teachers, paano po kunyari, for example, they would not watch the video. They would not read the PowerPoint presentation. Do you think they would be able to answer the activity the next day? Definitely not. So ako po, during the time that I do this, I, uh, every time that I do this, uh, rather inside the classroom, right now po, hindi ko na siya nagiging problema because the students know that if they would not be, be responsible enough, then they would not be able to do the activity. So they have to face the repercussions, the consequences of their actions. So yung mga bagay po na yung teachers, kailangan din po nalang maranasan, di ba po? Para at least makita po nila, ah, this is the value of flip classroom. We need to learn on their own. They need to understand that we teachers are instruments for them to learn, but we would never be enough kung hindi naman nila gigistuhin na matuto. Alright? Now, so there are four pillars of flip classroom. Okay? 
So we'll say flexible environment. Of course, flexible because we can do it online, we can do it face to face. We uh, pwede nilang gawin sa bahay, pwede nilang gawin sa bahay ng klase nila, pwede nilang gawin sa bahay ng ng for example, kamag-anak nila sa loob ng school and then the like. Learning culture because it fits the preferences of the teenagers or of the students nowadays actually kahit na elementary to high school to preschool to college. Intentional content kasi po teachers hindi naman po sila yung namimili ng video. Tayo naman po yung namimili ng video. Tayo naman po yung namimili ng isa-send natin sa kanila. So actually, pwede nang tayo mismo yung i-video, right? Para so para, para talaga man yung content po na na isa-send natin sa kanila, of course, would have to be uh, the only content that they, that they need to understand. But the biggest question is, is this strategy allowing us to become professional? Some teachers would disagree because they would say, no, why? Kasi parang pinasa mo na yung pagtuturo sa technology. But no, teachers. Why? Because through this specific strategy, we would be able to address what the student need. What's, what the students need, actually. So because it's their learning preference. So in other words, po, it does not make us any less. In, other, uh, in fact, it makes us more professional because we are able to fulfill our missions uh, more effectively than how we used to do it before, right? However, my dear teachers, of course, marami pa din siyempre yung magsasabi na, ah, hindi talaga maganda yung flip classroom. That is why I have here with me a table, a comparison of traditional and flip classroom. So in the traditional model, my dear teachers, students often try to capture what is being said at the instant the speaker says it. Right now po, lahat po ng sinasabi ko, tinitake note nyo na po, sabay-sabay na po yan, dire-diretso. However, in a flip classroom, pwede mo pong i-rewind, i-fast forward, paulit-ulitin yung parts na hindi mo naintindihan. In other words, it gives you freedom to understand, of course, uh, the content that you missed. By, of course, the replay button. You can murder the replay button as long as you want hanggang maintindihan mo siya. In a traditional classroom, there's no time for reflection. Di ba? Minsan, mga bata, nakapag, ay, nag-delay dream na kasi na sobrang nahook sila sa lesson. A ending, hindi sila nakakinig. In a flip classroom, they have an ample amount of time to reflect and to understand the lesson. So those are some of the advantages of, of course, implementing a flip classroom. However, my dear teachers, of course, just like any teaching strategy, Flip classroom also has its downsides. It's specifically, one, it's an easy model to get wrong. Pag mali po yung PowerPoint ang nasend mo, mali yung video na nasend mo, wrong content, wala na, sira na. That's why you have to be careful in preparing the materials that you're going to provide to them. And it requires a lot of effort on the time of the part of the teacher. Because we do not just teach, we also prepare the the videos you also uh, monitor them from time to time so dumadami po talaga and even it may even require us to have additional skills uh, for new uh, of course uh, lalo na yung mga hindi technologically inclined di ba kailangan matuto sila mag-edit ng video mag mag video ng sarili and then the like so that's why it's also prone to complaints especially when students know that the video lectures are are just downloaded online and can are accessible, of course, by any, uh, I mean, kahit sino po. Teachers, however, we have to be reminded, yes, totoo, to baka sugurin tayo ng, ng, ng parents, oy, nagbabayad ako ng 30,000 pesos, as sasabihin mo sa akin, puro video lang ang ginagawa mo sa klase. <laughs> but if the parents would know that the purposes of this kind of teaching strategy, then I don't think that would happen. In fact, if the parents would know that this is something that must be done because this is uh, how that how the learners learn today, then I think they would be the first set of individuals that would help us. And of course, it's costly. Magastos kasi may internet, may, may gadgets. Diba po? But again, teachers, we have to understand na lahat naman po ng teaching methods, meron talagang sacrifices, may bago talaga. And hopefully, sooner or later, we would be able to address these things. Right? Now, teachers, again po, quick recap po, when you say flip classroom, we start by uploading, of course, video recordings, audio recordings, rich websites, and then doon po, teachers, mag-make meaning po yung mga bata, habang iniintindi nila yon, mag-uusap po yan, mag-online discussions uh, with one another, and then lahat po natutunan nila, teachers, that's the time that they demonstrate this, they apply these things, of course, in your activities, in your assessment tools, that, that, uh, that would be, of course, given to them. Uh, inside the classroom, face to face. All right. So that is, of course, flip learning. All right. Now let me proceed to the last part. 
of course, blended learning. Blended learning, misconception po, sabi ng iba, parehas sa hybrid learning. Actually, it's really called hybrid learning in a way, but there's, of course, there are actually differences. Why? In hybrid learning po, sabi ko nga kanina, kadalasan po, parang sobrang flexible siya. Pwedeng baliktad, pwedeng activity, pwedeng discussion, yung online, and then the like. In blended learning po, more often than not by your teachers. It's a strategy where online learning does not replace traditional learning. So in other words po, by your teachers, andun pa din kadalasan si Minsan, si teacher, uh, Minsan, Minsan, nagkiteacher talk pa din of course. Although, hindi naman talaga kailangan na mag-lecture ng palagi po kasi we have to understand that that is a specific teaching strategy that does not keep the learning preferences of our student nowadays. So again, blended learning po is a combination of online learning and face-to-face. -face. So magkasama pa din po sila parang hybrid and para pong uh, flip classroom. However, here po, mas marami pong face-to-face -face kaysa sa online. Right? So three parts po. One, in-person classroom activities facilitated by a trained educator. Of course, remember, in 21st century education, we create activities, we design activities that the students uh, would be doing to be able to uh, develop the skills sa kanila po. Second, of course, online learning materials often including pre-recorded lectures given by the same instructors. Or if we cannot record ourselves po, pwede na naman po tayo mag-download ng video. We just need to be careful po. Kasi baka mamaya iba po yung content. Okay? And of course, structured independent study time guided by the material and the lectures and skills developed during the classroom experience. Teachers, mahalaga po ito ha. Independent study time. Hindi po teacher-centered instruction. We have to let them explore po the topic. And if they have questions, they come at us, of course, they ask, and then we do our best to answer. Right? So, a new role for teachers in blended classroom, of course, ano po ba yun? One, we provide timely feedback and guidance. Hindi lang po sa academic subjects natin. Kasi po, of course, say for example, they're doing specific activities. While they are doing these activities, we're given, of course, the time to roam. O waga, nakakaikot tayo sa kanila. We would be able to notice, bakit parang si Suzanne Tinkunto medyo matamlay ngayon? And then, of course, we'll be able to, of course, address their needs as well. Timely feedback and guidance para tayong personal coach. And of course, through these interactions, we are able to develop a deeper, a stronger relationship with them because mas nagiging maganda po yung rapport natin. And last Lastly, of course, data masters because in a way, because uh, everything that they do online, lahat po yan may data. So it's easy for us to track anong content sila nahihirapan. Di ba ang hirap po pag manual ang item analysis? Number one, sinong mali? Number two, sinong tama? Number three, sinong mali? And then the like. So through the use of various technologies in one click, nakikita po natin aling specific topics ang kailangan ng intervention. So na-address po natin agad kung ano po yung kailangan ng mga estudyante po ngayon. Alright, so redefining teachers' roles, of course, again, my dear teachers, we create online and offline courses, we facilitate uh, communication with them offline and online, uh, we guide them, of course, in learning the experience, uh, I mean, we gu guiding the learning experience of individual students and customizing material wherever possible to strengthen the learning experience, personalized education po. Yung mga nahihirapan sa ganitong topic, we can give more activities to them. Yung mga nadadala, we can give enrichment activities to them para po at least lahat sila, uh, they would actually have this uh, sat uh, yung feeling po na uh, uh, masarap sa pakiramdam kasi nabibigay mo kung ano yung kailangan nila. I mean, so kung, as students, of course, they would feel na, okay, satisfactory performance ko, right? So, and of course, assessment and grading, not unlike the expectation for teachers within the traditional framework. Because in the olden, of course, uh, kumbaga sa traditional method po, pen and paper lang. Right now, there's still, of course, pen and paper. Mahalagang, mahalagang, mahalaga pa rin po ang pen and paper. But we have to understand that we already have project-based assessment, performance-based assessment na magagamit po natin, of course, to be equipped with the things that we actually need to know and we actually need to, uh, I mean, that the students actually need to know and the students actually need to understand. All right? So, benefits of blended learning po. Ano-ano pong benefits na? Of course, one, this is uh, expected. They are more engaged. Because it's technology. They enjoy it, diba? Their uh, teachers are, of course, uh, given uh, time to interact with them. Diba po? Mas, na, mas napapalalim yung understanding. So, it's extra time to facilitate contact with learners. So, mas napapalalim yung understanding because we're only given limited minutes inside the classroom. So, nababa, yung oras ng online assessment can be done at home. Pag ginawa sa bahay, of course, uh, 
mas mahaba yung oras natin to ensure that the students are able to understand the lesson accurately. And of course, the second one, uh, blended learning allows training trainees to take information home and have their own time to assimilate it. Just like what I told you earlier, nakaka-pressure po sumabay lalo sa fast learners. So through blended learning, this slow learners po, or yung average, kahit minsan yung average, nandun yung feeling nila na, ay, may intindihan ko to. Before I go to school tomorrow, I will be able to understand this one. So I will, I will be able to explore the concepts uh, bago ko pumasa. Alright? So that's online. So when talk about blended classroom, ito po yan teachers. Uh, dalawang mundo, di ba? Dalawang mundong pinagtagpo, right? So, the blue one, of course, is the brick and mortar classroom. The green one, of course, is the computer-generated classroom. So, in this specific classrooms, of course, uh, here. In this specific classrooms, of course, uh, uh, tatandaan po natin pag brick and mortar face-to-face -face yan. Pag online po, ito po yung virtual na classroom. So, saan po ang blend and learning? Doon po sa gitna. So, pag nasa gitna po tayo, my dear teachers, uh, ibig sabihin po, meron tayong brick and mortar, meron po tayong online learning. So, that is, of course, blended learning. So, some of you might be confused. Sir, wait lang, nalito na ako. Yung flip classroom, mixed in. Yung hybrid education, mixed in. Yung blended learning, mixed in. Then, what would make these things distinct from one another? Ito po yan, my dear teachers. Ito po ang, ang sagot saan. <laughs> All right. So blended learning, hybrid learning, flip classroom. So let us try to have a quick summary. Po. For blended learning, po, my dear teachers, yes, it's a combination of both worlds, uh, both online and brick and mortar location. So blended learning, po. However, when we have to, uh, what we have to remember, the face in blended learning scenarios, face time between students and teachers is not replaced by online course delivery. More often than not, online component of the learning experience usually covers exercises or additional content enrichment tools. So in other words po, kadalasan assessment po ang ginagamit sa technology when it, uh, sa, sa online po yun ang pinapasilite sa online sa blended learning. Sa hybrid learning po on the other hand po, ito po mas madaming online. Why? Because a significant portion of the course takes place online and a hybrid learning scenario replaces much of the student-teacher face time in a brick-and-mortar location with online interaction. Kasi po, sa hybrid learning, it is a must for you to create online interaction. So, kailangan may trends, kailangan makapag-usap kayo, may online discussions, and then the like. So, sa pag-blended learning po, parang sabi natin, ulitin ko po yung binigay ko kayo, parang, 60% face-to-face, 40% online. Pwede pong ganyan, subjectively. Sa hybrid po, pwedeng 50-50 or pwedeng 40-60. 40 face-to-face, 40, uh, 60 online. And of course, flip classroom po. This is naman po uh, the strategy that uses both worlds din po. However, uh, this pertains po on how uh, the roles of the homework and the assessment tools po are being reversed. So, napapadababaliktad po. So, student is exposed to a new material outside the class, usually in form of an online presentation. And napaparating po sa school, and that's the time that he would be able, that he should apply the things that he is actually learning online. So, these things po are the three uh, technology-based methods that I'm going to discuss today. I hope you understand, uh, you were able to pick up a lot of insights po sa tatlong strategies po na to. My dear teachers, tandaan po natin ha, we talk about technology, but we, we should not forget that we should focus on our instructional design and of the content, not on the technology that you are going to use. Critically re-examine course goals and objectives and consider carefully how they can be best achieved in the hybrid environment. In other words po, huwag po natin pilitin kung hindi po kaya ng hybrid, hindi po kaya ng flip, hindi po kaya ng blended. So we know better po kung anong lesson po ang babagay para sa tatlong strategies na yun. So of course, again po, let me just reiterate, we go after the content. Content po is premium po. Of course, uh, technology is also important, pero mahalagang mahalaga po teachers that the students would also be able, of course, to acquire the knowledge and develop the skills that they need to know. Alright? So, now my dear teachers, uh, let me end this specific presentation with a quote uh, from Wiggins and Maktai in 2007. So these are, of course, the learning, uh, I mean, the proponents of the understanding by design of the very famous UBD. Sabi nila, critically mission challenge stood, uh, cr uh, critically uh, mission challenge 
then is for students to construct a way for all staff members to come to deeply understand and make learning principles their own. Gaya po ng sinabi ko kanina, teachers, there's no perfect teaching strategy. Di ba? May kanya-kanya po yung effectivity. There were specific lessons na mas bagay to. There would be specific lessons na mas bagay naman po yung ganyan. We all have our own idea of teaching. We all have our own strengths. We all also have all our weaknesses. But remember, teachers, what we have to remember po is that Uh, there are a lot of changes already in the field of education. So we already have to change already the prin this specific principles po na meron tayo in the past. And i-grasp po natin kung ano po yung learning principles ngayon because this is what would make our students better. All right. So with this, my dear teachers, I'm ending po the presentation. Thank you so much po for attending. Sana po marami po tayo na intindihan. Ayan. So right now po, we still have roughly around 8 minutes po. So... I hope andito pa po tayo. So right now po, nasa ilang libo pa din po ang nanonood. So let's try to ask po, I let's try to answer po some of your queries. So if you have questions po, you may type your questions po and I'll do my best po to answer this specific questions. All right? So let me start po with the questions with the question from Josephine at Kensa. Sabi po ni Miss Josephine, can we consider hybrid learning as the most ideal one considering the situation right now? Could this be possible in all public schools? Alam niyo po teachers, nabasa ko po, uh, meron pong ginagawang mga different, uh, uh, I mean, uh, nabasa ko po sa isang article that DepEd is also planning na baka possible po na mag-online mag learning na lang po muna. So for me po, yes, hybrid education can be the solution for this one. Although we have to admit, of course, the resources would be a very big problem. Pero I think po, sabi ko nga po kanina, we can always create our own, di ba? Pwede naman i-mix-mix natin yung principles. Pwede, for example, pagpunta nila sa school, instead of, uh, instead of, uh, that, uh, of course, instead of accessing this thing online, pwede ibigay na natin sa kanila agad uh, via USB or whatsoever. Other different means naman po to provide them the information and timetable para po at least ma-meet din po natin kung ano yung mga competencies na kailangan natin ma-meet. Kasi the hardest part right now po in this COVID-19 situation is that everything po is full of uncertainty. Di ba talagang unpredictable po talaga. So, I think po, that's yes po, that's possible. All right? So, what else pa po? Ayan po, from Miss Annie Tomas, what an excellent speaker. Galing ka, Sir Blab. Uh, thank you po. Thank you, Vival Group. Thank you rin po, ma'am, for, uh, for uh, of course, uh, watching. And of course, I, I do hope na sana po marami kayo natutunan today. This one from Miss Alma Ablog. What tips can you suggest on how we can effectively assess or grade students' activities performance online if parents are present beside them at home? Salamat po, Sir Zora. Alam niyo po, my dear teachers, ito rin po yung tanong ko sa sarili ko a few weeks ago. Because a few weeks ago po, nag-declare ako first ang UST, sabi namin, sabi ng UST, tuloy ang online classes namin. So sabi ko sa sarili ko, what would I do? Parang, paano ko... Paano ko masisigurado na estudyante ko ang nagsasagot at estudyante ko gumagawa ng outputs? Then I realized that one, technology is not my enemy, technology is my friend. So in other words po, my dear teachers, madami po tayo pwede explore na technology. Yung mga technology po, tools po na magagamit natin, kung saan po makikita natin pwede may video sila habang nagsasagot sila, pwede may napipicture na sila habang nagsasagot sila. So marami po ang ways. For example, plagiarism cases, there are specific met, uh, applications online for free na pwede po natin gamitin para po matrack to plagiarism cases and then the like. Also, of course, aside from these technological tools at technology tools po na, na pwede natin magamit, huwag din po natin kalimutan teachers na ipaliwanag po sa mga parents that the very reason why we're doing this. Because uh, again po, if the parents would know that these tasks are important and are vital po uh, for their children po to know, to grow, uh, to grow, to be able to develop these skills, and I don't think po na sila yung magiging hindrances for their, school, for their children po to develop this thing. So instead po, uh, kung maintindihan po nila yan, sila pa po yung uh, first set of individuals na talagang tutulong at tutulong po sa atin. Right? Next po, from uh, Hibik Chulyun, PH. How can we address the dangers of online to the learners as young adults? Alam nyo po, my dear teachers, Right now po, even the social media, fake news is prevalent, di ba? Sabi nga nila, labang ang may alam. 
Pero ito po kasi naniniwala ko, teachers, this is also a test for our students to apply their critical thinking skills. Remember, we do not just teach them to know things about science, about math, about English, about TLE, PE, music, and then the like. We also teach them how to become critical thinkers. And at least, and I think if they would be able to develop this kind of skill, then yung mga danger po that this online environment poses would, be able, uh, would of course be prevented. All right? So yun po. Ay po. So, my dear teachers, it's already 4.55 po. So, wala na po tayong oras, unfortunately. So, uh, with this po, uh, bago ko po tapusin yung stream, uh, alam ko po, marami pong mga estudyante, ang, uh, ay marami pong teachers rather, na nagahanap po ng kanilang mga certificates. Again po, i-remind ko lang po kayo na on the process naman po, ginagawa na po yung mga certificates. Kaya lang, more than 100,000 na po kasi ang nag-register almost every day. So, madami po talaga. But of course, Bival is always uh, a generous partner po. Uh, talaga namang, uh, they would do their best, of course, to offer webinars, uh, ways on how the teachers would learn, as well as the parents. May mga parents po actually nanonood, mga studyante po nanonood. Uh, speaking of teachers po, may mga teachers ako from USC Junior High School nanonood, uh, shout out sa English Department po. Ayan po, salamat po. Uh, ayun po, some comments lang po before we end the presentation. Uh, uh, from Miss Sherry Evangelista, galing mo sir, thank you, more power to you. Uh, lahat po yan, napag-aaralan po. So talaga pong true, uh, continuous reading lang po talaga, ma-internet, makuha po natin on how we would be able to become the best teachers for our students. Ayan po, uh, next comment po. Uh, from Mr. John Ray Catalan, this seminar helped validate my topic to my department from my S from from our SLAC last February. Thanks a lot. I'm really glad po na nakatulong kami ng Vibal po sa pag-clarify ng specific information about technology. So again po, last comment po from Miss Aaron Malimban. Thank you for another fruitful sharing of a great topic and also tips. Indeed po, today's discussion po is a very timely uh, talaga discussion and I do hope that you would be able, of course, to maximize uh, kung ano po lahat na natutunan natin today. All right? So again po, teachers, stay safe po and let me end this specific uh, webinar po by saying that technology is not our enemy, it's our friend. So let us not be afraid of these changes. Let us embrace this specific changes. Let us be creative and innovative because through these things, we would be able to make the impossible possible. Stay safe po and God bless po my dear teachers.